Lyocell fall into the category of man-made fiber. As a regenerated fiber used in many applications, especially for textile industry, regenerated cellulosic fiber is made from chemically dissolved natural cellulose, which is a kind of artificial or man-made fibers. Without changing the chemical structure, this kind of fiber is totally biodegradable, while the other man-made fiber, such as synthetic fiber, which is produced from synthetic high molecular weight polymers is not. With the increasing demand for environment and sustainable concern, the more environmental friendly product are required more and more. The history of fabric creation began in an ancient times, and traces of natural fibers such as flax, cotton, silk, wool, and plant fibers have served man's textile needs. Later, there are an improvement in machines for spinning, weaving, and finishing, revolutionized the processing of fibers for fabric. In the 18th and 19th centuries, innovators developed synthetic fabrics to overcome some of the inherent limitations of natural fibers, such as cotton and linen wrinkle easily. Silk requires delicate handling, wool shrinks, and also its high prices. Man-made fibers made it possible to add antimicrobial properties, wrinkle resistance, broader aesthetic range, dyeing capabilities, color fastness. Greater comfort and a host of other performance improvements at lower costs. Synthetic fibers are made from synthesized polymers of small molecules. The compounds that are used to make these fibers come from raw materials such as petroleum-based chemicals or petrochemicals. These materials are polymerized into a chemical that bonds two adjacent carbon atoms. Differing chemical compounds are used to produce different types of synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers account for about half of all fiber usage, with applications in every field of fiber and textile technology. Although many classes of fibers based on synthetic polymers have been evaluated as potentially valuable commercial products, nylon, polyester, acrylic, and polyolefin dominate the market. These four account for approximately 98% by volume of synthetic fiber production, with polyester alone accounting for around 60%. Synthetic fibers often have increased durability, strength, and resistance compared to natural fibers. They can also dry very quickly, be extra absorbent, be made into waterproof fabrics, and be made into elastic or stretchy fabrics for swimwear and lingerie. But they do not trap air pockets like cotton and thus provide poor insulation. Some consumers claim that textiles made with synthetic fibers are less skin-friendly or may cause discomfort over long periods of wear. Most synthetic fibers absorb very little moisture and thus may become sticky when the body sweats. At the end of their life, the waste produced by synthetic fibers is generally not very good for the environment. When burnt, they can produce poisonous gases. Synthetic fibers are a source of microplastic pollution when landfilled. They take a long time to degenerate as they are non-biodegradable, and the chemicals used in their manufacture can leach out into the environment. Come to the regenerated cellulosic fiber. That is the main topic we are going to discuss. Despite the fact lyocell, modal, and rayon are all made from wood pulp, the way they are manufactured means making them not truly a natural fiber like cotton, hemp, or wool. Nor can they be considered synthetic fabrics, as they are originally sourced from natural wood. This is why they are typically referred to as regenerated cellulosic fibers. The properties of these cellulose fibers are more similar to natural cellulose fibers like cotton or flax. Then synthetics such as nylon or polyester. Let's start with an overview of the development of these fiber. The first generation is rayon, sometimes is called viscose rayon or artificial silk. It is known for its high luster and bright shine, whilst feeling soft and smooth to wear. But this kind of fabric is weak and shrink when wet. As one of the regenerated cellulosic fibers, viscose fiber has the largest output. However, the wastes produced in the manufacturing process are difficult to eliminate, which restricts the development of viscose fiber. The rayon manufacturing process start with treating the pulp with caustic soda solution to form alkali cellulose. When mercerization is complete, the excess of caustic liquor can be pressed and then transferred to a shredding machine for the next operation. The pressed alkali cellulose is shredded mechanically to yield finely divided, fluffy particles called crumbs. Carbon disulfide is added to form sodium cellulose xanthate. This process is called xanthation. 
the yellow crumb is dissolved in aqueous caustic solution. Because the cellulose xanthate solution has a very high viscosity, it has been termed viscose. As the alkali cellulose needs aging, this viscose solution requires to be ripened to give a solution having the best spinning qualities. Hence, the ripened solution is again filtered carefully and deaerated. The solution is now ready for spinning to produce viscose rayon filaments by wet spinning method. The viscose solution is metered through a spinneret into a spin bath containing sulfuric acid to acidify the sodium cellulose xanthate. Once the cellulose xanthate is neutralized and acidified, rapid coagulation of the rayon filaments occurs which is followed by simultaneous stretching and decomposition of cellulose xanthate to regenerated cellulose. However, a large amount of industrial discharge generated in this process will restrict the development of viscose fiber industry. The second generation of cellulose fiber is modal. Its softness has been enhanced and strength has been added to the fabric, so that it doesn't shrink or stretch when wet. Production of modal is very similar to the process to make rayon, with a few modifications to produce a higher strength fiber with an even softer finish. Lyosyl is then the latest development in cellulose fabric technology. It's better for the environment. Due to advancements in sustainable manufacturing, Lyocell also retains the softness, drape and potential antibacterial properties of previous generations. In order to meet the demands of environmental and increasing performance, Lyocell fiber, instead of viscose fiber, will become the most dominant production capacity of the regenerated cellulose fiber. Lyocell fiber is claimed as green and eco-friendly fiber. The preparation of Lyocell fiber is based on the cellulosic non-derivative solution system, and methylmorpholine and oxide system which is non-toxic and recyclable. In the non-derivative dissolution system, cellulose can be dissolved directly in a solvent only accompanied by destroying the crystalline structure. The lyocell route to the regenerated cellulose fibers is based on non-derivative dissolution of cellulose in an organic and aprotic solvent. Compared with the preparation of viscose fiber, lyocell has some advantages. 1. The NMMO to H2O solvent could directly dissolve the cellulose without mercerization, aging, xanthation, and other treatments. The whole process lasts for 3 to 4 hours, and the production efficiency has been greatly improved. 2. No derivatization is involved. Thus the original degree of polymerization of the cellulose could have the maximum conservation. And 3. Very few chemicals are applied and the NMMO solvent recovery is higher than 99%. In addition, the NMMO has the advantages of non-toxic, environmentally harmless, and biodegradable. Raw Materials for Regenerated Cellulosic Fiber The raw material of the regenerated cellulose fiber is defined as dissolving pulp. It is a kind of fiber pulp mainly made from wood or cotton linter, with high content of cellulose and low content of other chemical components. To ensure that the product is eco-friendly, manufacturer must guarantee that sources of their wood are from sustainably harvested forests certified by the Forest Stewardship Council or FSC. This means that proper forest management is ensured to sustain, conserve and restore forests for future generations to enjoy. Lyocell are very sustainable fabrics when you buy them from responsibly sourced manufacturers. The production process of dissolving pulp basically almost the same as producing normal wood pulp, but some specific and additional process are required to get certain properties and conditions of dissolving pulp, including high alpha cellulose, high degree of polymerization, low metal ion and ash, and remarkable reactivity or solubility properties. According to these requirements, acid sulfite or prehydrolysis craft pulping are selected for producing wood-based dissolving pulp. But pre-hydrolysis craft pulping process is the majority. Pre-hydrolysis craft pulping process is a combination process of acid pre-hydrolysis with alkaline cooking. The production processes and product features of varied regenerated cellulose fibers have different demands on the performance of raw material. The degree of polymerization of dissolving pulp directly affects the mechanical strength of lyocell fiber. In theory, the higher degree of polymerization the better mechanical strength can be occurred. However, an excessively high degree of polymerization may result in a poor solubility and an increase in the viscosity of spinning dope. Balancing the relationship between degree of polymerization and the solubility of dissolving pulp has a great impact on the spinning process and the performance of corresponding fiber.
The specific methods involve improving the pre-hydrolysis strength and moderating the cooking conditions. In the new process of lyocell production, a pretreatment process is used to improve solubility of lyocell fiber in the NMMO aqueous solution. It is found that the degree of polymerization between 650 and 750 is required. Lyocell fiber demands a very pure cellulose with low metal ions and ash. The metal ions, especially iron ions are easy to degrade the NMMO, thus affecting the dissolution of fiber and the recovery of the NMMO, while other impurities such as ash could block the nozzle. NMMO or N-methylmorpholine N-oxide is a cyclic, aliphatic, tertiary amine oxide. It's a high polar organic amine with NO bond having a dipole moment. Due to its highly polar nature, it can form hydrogen bonds with the hydroxyl groups of cellulose and has extremely high solubility in water. A competing reaction takes place between water and cellulose for NMMO molecules and water being a smaller molecule is preferred. These properties are the basis for its use as cellulose solvent. Properties of NMMO NMMO is a strong oxidizer and a very corrosive solvent. Pure NMMO melts at 170 degrees Celsius. At temperature more than 150 it can undergo highly exothermic decomposition reactions. Therefore, pure NMMO melt cannot be used as a solvent for cellulose. NMMO mono and dihydrate melt at 74 and at 35 degrees Celsius respectively. Therefore, water content and temperature of NMMO play an important role in dissolution of cellulose. NMMO hydrates of required composition, or NMMO slash water can be used as a possible solvent and relatively homogeneous cellulose solutions can be prepared only with relatively minor amounts of water. The lyocell production process starts by suspending pulp and water and NMMO. In order to get a homogeneous slurry, water is removed and cellulose is thereby dissolved to form a solution called dope. Prior to spinning, the cellulosic solution is filtered in order to remove undesired particles and undissolved material. The heart of the production is the spinning process, where the cellulosic solution is pressed through a number of very small orifices thereby forming cellulosic filaments. These filaments are cut into staple fibers of desired length, and then enter the after-treatment zone, where the fibers are washed, and a finishing agent is applied. The wet staple fiber are then dried, opened, pressed into bales, and finally packed to obtain the final product. The recovery rate of NMMO in the lyocell process is more than 99%. The recovery starts with filtration and pre-purification steps of the spin bath before water is removed by evaporation to obtain makeup NMMO. And the whole cycle can start again. Water that is obtained from the evaporation step is also fed back into the process and only a small amount of water is sent to the wastewater treatment plant. Structure and Properties of Lyocell Fiber Lyocell fiber is quite different from viscose fiber and native cotton fiber in structure. The cross-sections are lace-shape, roughly circular and flat for viscose, lyocell, and cotton, respectively. Application of Lyocell Compared with other regenerated cellulose fibers, Lyocell fiber has excellent properties. Thus, it is widely used in clothing, non-woven, conveyor belts, industrial filter material, and even medicine fields. Lyocell fiber can also be blended with cotton, hemp, silk, synthetic fiber, viscose fiber. For textile, the advantage of lyocell fabric are it's very breathable that helps keep you cool in hot weather. It's antibacterial, meaning that your clothes will smell fresher for longer. It's comfortable. It's strong when wet. Unlike rayon, this gives the benefit of being able to be machine or hand washed without needing to worry about the material stretching or losing its shape. It's not crinkle or crease so it's useful if you hate ironing. It's versatile. So you can use it for everything. From soft flowy dresses or t-shirts. Through to breathable bed sheets. Stretchy activewear. Or stiffer smart shirts. It's great for sensitive skin so it helps keep the skin dry and avoids irritations. Finally, it's biodegradable since it's a 100% natural material made from wood pulp, meaning that it can fully biodegrade through home compositing. Anyway, lyocell will be a very sustainable fabrics when you buy them from responsibly sourced manufacturers. And it can be less eco-friendly if blended with less sustainable fabrics. Thank you very much for watching. 
subscribe and follow our channel. For other information, at YouTube channel. Excellent products and supply.